Hey guys, this is Ben Morrow. I'm a senior concept designer and art director in the game and film industry. And today I want to go over creating a cockpit for one of my old designs. I really like this old cargo ship I did, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to take it a little further and mock up a potential cockpit for this spaceship. So first thing I did was gather some reference looking at, you know, it's kind of like a space version of these kind of big cargo trucks used on Earth getting some NASA ships and looking at a lot of interiors of like industrial trucks and military trucks, Apache helicopters, bigger airplanes and, and NASA spaceships, just to get a sense for the amount of tech and screens and just the overall amount of clutter of screens and buttons is really helpful to start using as a starting point. Real life is already really interesting, so it doesn't take much to make it a little more sci-fi and, and allow your sci-fi designs to look more interesting and believable using all that as a starting point. So from there, I'm just gonna do a really quick and dirty thumbnail sketch to get a sense of maybe the perspective and shot I wanna get, the angle I wanna show in the shot. Maybe this is for myself or showing a director or a production designer or maybe a set designer that needs to build all this stuff. So just trying to pick an angle that can show all the things that will be needed to be built and all the things that the actor will need to interact with or the player is going to see in the game. It's just a fun exercise and a good thing to, to try out. So after this, I'll just take it into Blender and do a quick mock-up of the basic shapes and get some simple lighting on it to take into Photoshop and do a tighter line drawing over top to get a sense for where I might want to take and refine this later on in 3D and Photoshop to do a more finished color illustration, maybe in a, a second video. Just taking it from that thumbnail sketch to a more refined state, something that's a bit more presentable and ready to show to your clients. So the first thing I'm gonna start doing is just getting the design and uh, a couple pieces of reference on the left to start sketching out just a, just a general cockpit view, kind of get it the angle I want, make it a little messy. Uh, this is just for yourself to kind of get an idea what you want it to look like, the kind of angle you want to be rendering and designing at, and some basic layout in top view to design where some of the things will be sitting before we move into 3D. After that, just go into Blender and start just blocking things out really simply with some cubes, not using anything really fancy or special here, just some really basic poly modeling. Uh, there's a lot of new techniques and things I could use if I want to take things further, but since this is an early block out, I just want to keep it very basic and simple, not using any kit bash pieces or anything, just build it all really quick with cubes and things. I find it's helpful to keep everything very simple for an early sketch phase like this, just so you get the basic volumes very simply and easily in place and aren't confused or blinded by details that can come with a lot of kit bash parts. So I just, for this, I just want to keep it very simple, quick, and easy, and make sure all the basic proportions and volumes are reading the way I want them to be before moving forward too much. Starting to block in the side walls and things based on the sketch to start defining the space this cockpit's gonna be in, making sure everything feels right and I can get the kind of proportion and space I want in this design. You know, we can draw some cool sketch, but just getting in there and figuring everything out is helpful to make sure everything is gonna look and feel the, the way you want it to, but also make sense within the context of your design. Start getting a camera in there to get more of a fisheye lens to get a better sense of how it's gonna look from the, the final shot I'll be using. Exploring some different angles of what it might look like if I chose to do different shots later on. I think earlier on I was planning to do maybe a bit more of a color illustration, so I start experimenting with the orange material to, to kind of see what it might look like and make sure the proportion is generally what I want it to be based on my earlier illustration. So just getting everything in place, making sure it's all feeling all right, starting to feel like it's getting to the general volume of my sketch. The, the sketch kind of had a different frame design along the windows, which I tried to play around with, but I think I ended up cutting in the end. I just want to keep it a little simple for this earlier phase. Even though it creates a really interesting graphic design shapes on the window. Getting a human model in there for scale, just to make sure all the proportions are a little more accurate. I didn't, this is just kind of like a photo scan 3D model. 
a photo scan human, uh, so he's not posed in a sitting position, but it's still helpful to get some sort of human scale in your scene as early as possible, just so everything feels proportional to a human being who's going to be piloting this. Just getting mocking up the general proportion of the spaceship, even though we're not going to see it in the shot, I just want to make sure the cockpit space that I've created roughly is the kind of space that is going to be if I end up building out and refining the whole ship later on. Starting to render out some different camera angles and perspectives. I'm, I'm not sure if I want exactly the same angle as my sketch or if I want to do a, a slightly different angle. So I'm just rendering out a few different shots to uh, have some options for myself to see which one might be the best and most interesting angle to take further. And since it's in 3D, it's just really easy to just move the camera around and get a different angle. And um, definitely one of the benefits of, of mocking things up in 3D to get just things are so fast now and it's, it's super easy just to render off a different angle and play around for a bit to get the exact shot you want. Now that we've rendered off a few different angles, I'm just kind of making a selection of the exact shot I want before going into Photoshop and starting the final detailed line drawing. So I picked this angle just because it felt, had the spirit of the sketch, it's not exactly the same perspective angle, but I felt it allowed me to showcase all the objects in the scene. And I just kind of lightened the layer and put a, a white layer on a lower opacity to kind of allow me to see my line drawing a little better. Uh, just starting to use Lazy Nazumi to get some really tight and straight line drawings and just kind of blocking out generally all the proportions in the scene, drawing out the squares where the screens are all going to be and starting to detail out different buttons and things and placing them roughly where I want them to be to kind of start getting the nice clutter and details we saw in a lot of the early reference off to the sides on I have a couple different screens. I'm just kind of looking at the Apache photos and looking at the military industrial interiors and things and NASA photos to kind of draw some details from and uh, it's helpful to draw out in flat view and just warp it into perspective to be able to kind of build up a little library of 2D shapes and details to drag around and place in your scene. So a lot of the time now, uh, I kind of bounce back and forth between 3D and 2D in a lot of my work, uh, but I still find it's helpful to detail and design in 2D like this, even if, I mean, it doesn't necessarily take longer, but uh, designing in 3D can sometimes be a little hard to make changes or it can be a little slow. So being able to detail and design things and plan it out in 2D can be very helpful. And then if I make another video after this, I'll probably go back into 3D using this as a starting point and be able to make sure all my details are well organized and balanced out a little better than if I had done it in 3D. Sometimes it's hard to judge and see how all the shapes organize and how making sure there's a nice cohesive balance of big simple shapes to complex detail areas for your eye to rest on. And seeing it just all in straight line drawing is very, it's easier for me to organize and design things personally. Just getting all the panel breakups and starting to refine things more. The early blockout was, a, was definitely a little simple, so I'm just refining some of these shapes and moving things around where needed to create a more interesting, complicated, uh, believable cockpit getting the um, control sticks in place. If I were to do this over, I might add more levers and things to imply that he can, you know, go full throttle or, or something like this. But there's so many buttons and screens in here that uh, it's easy to justify that some of these buttons could allow him to increase the speed or shut off or whatever the function might be that they need the actor or whoever to do in a scene. Just starting to refine things further. I'm kind of liking where all these screens and things are in the scene. Um, a lot of the Apache and military screens, they have these really cool detail buttons all along the outside. Uh, I thought that was really cool detail, so I added that to a lot of the screens. It just adds a lot more functionality and stuff. And it's all, it's all real, so it, it looks even more interesting. 
just trying to get a sense for where the person is going to be sitting there placing their feet so having some rubber or industrial areas where his feet can rest maybe have some cup holders or, or areas where he can rest his arm and place food or, or whatever he might need rations try not to make it feel too futuristic so adding in cables and things hanging wires just making it all feel very functional and, and believable where it's not so far in the future that everything's just hidden and minimal i want it to feel just really uh a bit more grounded and and believable like it it really is just like a a cargo spaceship some future space trucker would be using to haul stuff around or traveling to find uh, the next big job. Starting to get some thicker lines in there to outline the major shapes so they pop out a bit more. I'm making it balancing out all the all the buttons were feeling a bit too similarly sized, so just playing up the diversifying the the scale of certain buttons. So some big buttons are bigger, some big buttons are smaller, just so your eyes and uh, just to add a bit more visual diversity in there. Again, drawing out detail shapes and side view and warping in perspective is a good way to keep your designs a bit more clean. So after blocking out some of those early pipes and things, just looking at some of the photo reference, you'll see there's always, you know, nothing's just floating in space. There's attachment points, there's things holding down cables and wires and just adding these little details in there will help sell the image more and make it a bit more believable. And if this was built as a set, it will just allow the audience to get, get immersed more into the scene. I thought these side areas on the left and right were a bit too empty, so I'm just trying to figure out some cool tech or something that could be placed there. Maybe there's some extra tech boxes or some extra side screens to help just fill that space with something interesting, but also leaving some room for maybe some equipment or cargo if needed to be placed over there. Since this is kind of like a space trucker, I just added some walkie-talkie radio thing that he could grab to communicate with maybe his colleagues or whoever's out in space. Most of the time, again, if this is more futuristic, we could just say that it's, you know, he just presses a comm button or something, but I, it's a nicer touch for an actor to interact with like something physical. So kind of a more retro uh, trucker walkie-talkie helps add a little more believability. So I felt everything was a bit too clean, so I started adding my initial sketch had like stickers and things on the wall to maybe some photos he's taped to the, the the side windows. Maybe he's got some little toys, bobblehead things to kind of help sell it. I don't think I ended up doing that in the final, but uh, these were things that I would probably add in the final illustration if I do another video. Just helping a lot, add a lot more wear and tear and personality, whoever this pilot is in the scene, it just will help sell the the, the mood a bit better kind of kept going back and forth on the background. I don't know if I want to have a star field or some just directional lines, uh, but I think I just end up going straight black to keep it simpler. This is usually kind of the most, not the most interesting part. It's a little boring, just detailing things, but it's, it's fun to figure all this stuff out. Just blocking things out, blocking it out into 3D, and then just going to town, zooming in and figuring out all the panel lines and part lines and cut lines of all this. It's just kind of part of the job as a designer to to figure things out. We kind of have to do it's good to learn how to do everything on a job. Just to, this sort of stuff is where it shows your strengths as a designer and how much, you know, just just figuring things out and detailing and and problem solving. Same thing as before, I felt this was a little, everything was a little too simple and just adding some cables and wires to help add some uh, interesting breakups to the to the screen silhouettes. So some cables on the left uh, I thought could help break that up a bit and help sell the kind of 
junky spaceship trucker in space vibe. A cool little thing to try out as well is creating flat graphic shapes and using the layer style with the outline to create some kind of fake line drawings. You can create some really detailed patterns and shapes this way to help add complexity to your scene. So just going through all these panels are a little simple, um, adding bolts and things where they would hopefully be. There's a lot of Apache cockpit interiors. It was interesting to see how a lot of that was. There's a lot of visible bolts and things in there, and it just helps add a lot of believability to that. A lot of these are very simple, planar cut lines. So just going in there and breaking it up with additional part lines to help, again, sell the believability. At first, I thought I might want to add some screen designs and details. So I just went in and added some of those, but I ended up taking that out. Also, I went back and forth on maybe I use some of the values from the 3D renders to add a little more value information to the final image. But I think I end up going a little more pale white just so you can see the design details a little more. Like maybe adding a little value, have the screens pop and uh, have some light interacting with some of the objects, but I felt like that's something I'd want to do in the the more detailed uh, color rendering later on. So I just kind of keep it a little more simple in the final. Adding some darker lines as final touches to allow shapes to pop so they're not just all kind of blurring together into one big shape. I kind of took a break and thought it was just a bit too clean. So I thought some extra decals and hazard stripes and things would help add a little more. Again, just some more believability and details to the, the scene. In a lot of these interiors, there's just like product logos and manufacturer logos and things everywhere. So it just helps, uh, again, add a little more uh, real world believability to uh, this, this made up future cockpit. So going back and forth with the uh, 3D rendering in the final sketch, you can kind of see it, it's a really efficient process. You know, we can just take a quick dirty thumbnail sketch we do for ourselves, go into Blender or whatever 3D package you're comfortable with and mock up some simple shapes, uh, take it into Photoshop and start refining to get a pretty detailed and presentable design sketch to show to your director or client and see if they're happy with this or if you need some changes to start on the next phase of refining further and going into 3D to, to build all this out a bit more detailed and do a final color illustration and should be ready to go to hand off to your the VFX team or whoever you're going to be handing off to next. And it's helpful to have a nice color illustration and also have a pretty refined uh, 3D block out to hand off so that the design translates pretty easily and saves guys down the pipeline more time. Hope you guys found this useful and give it a try in your own workflows. All the stuff is really fast and efficient techniques to mock things up and get some tight production line drawings for, for personal work or professional work. This is our starting point and I'll just go over some pretty efficient techniques using image planes as textures to get some pretty detailed looking assets without having to do a lot of modeling. So with that, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is open up our previous block out and go to import and click on image planes as textures. And I'm just selecting the reference sheet we made and importing that into the scene. And if you go into rendered view, the textures will pop up. And I'm basically just using this like I would in Photoshop as like a photo bash. But in Blender, I'm just going into edit mode and using the slice tool to, to cut out pieces that I find interesting or want to use in my scene. And this is really handy because a lot of times on set and stuff, they'll take our illustration, but they're not they don't have the time or the budget to actually create custom pieces for everything. So a lot of time we'll just find like something that looks similar and, and kit bash it on set to create this cockpit or whatever. So I'm taking some things from, I really like the screens in a lot of the Apache helicopters. So I basically use the slice tool to cut that out and just do some quick poly modeling to create some of the geo that it would look like. A lot of it is pretty hacky, 
but it's good enough to again like photo bashing a lot of the the photos and things are different resolutions and stuff but from a distance and from the distance that the final illustration is going to be it's good enough you know it's kind of like an in-between of concept art and really time intensive 3d models so a lot of the times for the final you want to go in there and model everything really detailed but a lot of the time the turnaround times can be really fast so we don't just don't have time to do that so i find this is a good in-between of getting a more final finished illustration without having to spend, you know, days and days modeling every little detail and button in there. And again, from a distance, it looks good enough. And because it's in 3D and you can mess with the textures to get some of the materials to be a bit more accurate, you get something pretty good uh, for the time you put in. And I find this to be more effective and interesting than photo bashing just because it is in 3d so if the director doesn't like it or they want a different angle you can you can move the camera around in a couple seconds to get exactly what they want and so i'm just taking that one screen and and arranging all the screens where i had them in our production drawing and kind of arranging things generally where they were and just finding some display th screens and things i like this kind of uh I think it was like a NASA or a military airplane screen. And I just want the screens to be all blue. And I'm just cutting that out and putting it in there and playing with some of the textures to get it to glow a little bit. I think I just end up messing with the emission and, and setting it a bit higher so that uh, it emits some light on the, the objects in the scene. So we can start getting a sense for what the final illustration is going to be like with all these screens and with light coming out of those screens reacting in the environment. So just getting the blue screens on all these different things in the scene and starting to get a feel if that's looking OK or maybe we need more, maybe we need less. Starting to adjust some of the base lights I had in there to get a sense for there's going to be a bit more dark blue light in there using kit ops with some of the metal materials and just applying that in the scene. One of the cool things about kit ops, they have a bunch of different materials. There's a kind of graded metal floor and uh, you can adjust the size in the nodes to get something a bit more to scale. I'm also using some of the free kit bash pieces that are in kit ops. There's a lot of interesting free assets on the website that are just free to use. It helps to just get some kind of interesting shapes in there, even though we might not end up using all these. It just helps get a lot of detail and get light playing off a lot of more complex forms than just the simple block out we did. But that simple block out was really important because we got all of our forms in place and making sure everything reads correctly and we kind of solved a lot of the big problems and now it's just detailing what we created. Again, just copying things around, pushing things around, uh, getting some complex things in place to see if it looks OK. Add more lights on the screens. I didn't I felt like it wasn't getting enough light being emitted from just the flat texture. So I just added some extra lights to get some more blue light interplaying in the environment to see what it might look like playing with a couple different kit bash pieces so they're not all identical and just squashing and stretching and warping it around the scene to start getting things in place based on our production drawing. I kind of want to be more realistic military, but I kind of didn't mind using some random sci-fi pieces. I kind of liked having a bit of a mix in there just so it's not completely real world. There's some custom pieces, which again is is what would happen a lot of the time on set or in a game. You know, we'd want something a bit more sci-fi, but then maybe they can't afford to make every screen real. They'll probably have just some random screens that they have and they'll fit it into something that's a bit more custom. So just thinking about how things will be built is helpful as well so that you save people time on set that need to build all this stuff. And sometimes there will be those limitations when you are working. They'll say, we have these screens, you know, make some cool thing around it. Or, for example, on Elysium, they basically had a Dell laptop that they were just like, this is the laptop we're going to use. Design something cool on top so it looks sci-fi. So this are some things that do happen and are to be aware of and take into consideration while you're working on things. But you can see after you know a couple of minutes, we already have a sense of mood in the scene. We have some 
interesting details starting to happen really quickly. Uh, so it, it just gets really exciting. This is what I like. Blender is just really fast and this is all in real time in Eevee. And you just get that immediate sense of what this final thing is going to look like really fast. And there's so many cool plugins and things like kit ops and hard ops that allow you to just make a lot of stuff really fast and get some nice photo real materials within kit ops. It just feels like playing. I just feel I'm just having fun playing with stuff, making some cool spaceship in 3D. And it doesn't really feel like work. It's just having a lot of fun and just bringing this thing to life. So I felt like the block out of those screens was just a bit too basic. So I'm just getting some uh, Kitbash Geo in there to make something more interesting and rotating it around to find some cool shapes that might be interesting to use there. Scaling and rotating screens around. Again, you can see it. It's not too bad, but it just wasn't emitting enough light. So I just copy around some some point lights in there to get a little more bounce light from the screens. Doing some simple poly modeling on the chair, just getting things a little more interesting so it's not so chunky and blocky. In the production drawing, those support beams were a bit more detailed, so I just added some kit bash piece in there to make something more interesting. On the back walls, I Sometimes the kit bash pieces don't really work. So just going in there and using a hard ops or box cutter to make some kind of beveled industrial forms in there uh, is, a, is also a good way to create details. Just really fast, quick. All these plugins just make things so easy. So here I'm just adding in an HDRI. You do this by going to the world node and adding an environment texture and just loading in the HDRI. And then to control it, you add in a vector mapping node and then a texture coordinate node and just plug those in. And you can just play around with the Z, Y, X, and you can start rotating around the HDRI to get the exact lighting scenario you want. Or if you want some cool clouds or something in the background or some cool part of the image, you can um, just rotate it around like you would in Keyshot or any other rendering program. So I'm just loading in some different HDRIs to see what might be cool. I want this to be a space scene. Maybe it's some cloudy thing over a planet. Maybe it's some star field or something. I ended up, I found this kind of cloudy image I found on the internet to be kind of cool. Uh, just felt kind of epic. So I just go with that instead of a deep space star field or something. Uh, there's a lot of good HDRI sites that you can buy really high res high quality images. I just found some random thing on the internet, but because it's kind of like in the background, so it's not a, a huge part of the image. But if you have a big environment and you want everything to be really detailed and photoreal, I definitely recommend investing and in buying some good HDRIs from a ton of the different websites out there. Same thing, same technique, just going into our reference sheet and cutting out some cool details and buttons and trying to find buttons within our reference that are similar to the production drawing I did. I changed things a little bit here and there, but I generally try to get something to the same scale because we spent that time designing and organizing big versus small shapes, high details versus low details, areas of rest versus areas of complexity. Um, so I'm just trying to find interesting things that kind of fit those details we laid out in the in the production drawing. Same thing here when you cut out things from the reference sheet. Sometimes it's warped in perspective. You can just move the polygons around to get more of a flat perspective view so you can model it, start modeling and getting the details a bit more flat so they look correct in the environment. Same thing. It's sort of like the same thing as building a Kitbash library, a Photobash library, where you just cut out a bunch of stuff and have on the side, but it's just in 3D. And again, a lot of these are really blurry. Like if you zoom in real close, it's not that detailed, but where we're going to see it in the image is far enough away that it's not that big of a deal. And if this gets approved or whatever, you know, you'd go in and model that or the VFX team would go in there and model the really detailed final asset or whoever would be building that would would take that and do the crazy detailed final model that needs to be either built or in the in the final VFX shot. So again, just looking at all these Apache photos and there's so many cool little details in there and I'm just taking little things, little switches and buttons and 
trying to find some interesting things to to get this feeling a bit more realistic and industrial and just to help sell the sense of realism so it's not not a bunch of random sci-fi pieces everywhere what's interesting about blender is you can uh there's a bunch of different viewing modes i, I was going back and forth there's a light like this is the lighting mode but you can go back and forth there's a bunch of little globes in the upper right that it can just do flat texture mode so you can just see flat lighting with all your textures active and it's helpful to just look at all the details without any lighting kind of getting in the way. So it can helpful be helpful to go back and forth between those two or three different modes. We don't really see it too much, but I wanted to make sure the, the roof had some cool details and it wasn't just a flat uh, plane. So just moving around some of the kit bash pieces to get some interesting shapes up there and start putting buttons on the ceiling. So in the exterior view of the spaceship there are some really interesting beams and things for the windows and i kind of play around with a few different ideas for maybe we could do that cut some interesting shapes but ultimately i think i end up just going with the two beams in the front because i wanted this to focus more on the cockpit and the screens and all the details in there it just felt a bit too confusing and too busy so i just ended up keeping the simple two beams more like a those kind of cargo trucks from Earth and allow the interior screens and controls to take center stage and be the main focus of this instead of the, the background. Starting to model where the control six will be, uh, just a really simple geo on the sides to cylinder and cubes in there to get the place where I'm going to model a simple controller to stick in there. There's a lot of cool details on top of the Apache that I had in my production drawing, and I found some cool pieces in some of the photos that I could just do some quick models. So we have some kind of weird cameras and buttons and things on top of bigger displays to add some interesting details up there. So I just model a really quick control stick. I'm not going to show the whole thing, but, you know, it's taking a cube, modeling it out, getting some forms. I'm just looking at some of the Apache control sticks and, you know, it's just playing around and doing some simple poly modeling with some uh, hard ops modifiers on top. You can get something pretty quick. And that's kind of where I took it. It's, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but again, based on where it is in the illustration, it's not super important. It's good enough. And using some of the kit ops materials, it starts getting generally what I, I need it to be in the illustration. It, it sells the idea enough. Modeling some kind of flexible base where it could move around and bend if the uh, pilot's using this in the scene. So just modeling that, putting it in the place and copying that around and getting it generally where it needs to be and just mirror it to the other side. So both the control sticks are in there like they were in our production drawing. In the production drawing, there was a nice angle on that roof and I'm just kind of getting that in there and making the roof a little more interesting, getting some bigger detailed tech pieces on top. So there's some buttons above the screen. Again, just the import image plane is textures to get some really efficient and quick details in there. So now that a lot of these details are in place, I want to get some cool pipes and hoses in there. A really cool way to do that is adding a Bezier curve into your scene and then uh, deleting it and just using the draw tools on the left. And you can basically just draw a bunch of tubes and using a uh, speed flow. There's a tubify modifier that allows you to just create instant tubes around your Bezier curve. And you can basically just draw a bunch of lines everywhere around your scene and it will uh, stick to the walls and things. And then you can just go in and in edit mode, adjust the kind of tubes. And it's a really cool and fun way to get some interesting pipes and hoses all over your scene without too much uh, headache. Just copying it around once I got something I liked. In our drawing, we had a bunch of hoses and tubes on the left and um, 
you know, just starts helping sell this kind of cramped techie vibe I was going for. Something that's not perfect or brand new. We kind of want this to be a lived in industrial looking thing that's uh, maybe he's had to repair things or things have fallen apart and he's it just looks more lived in and utilitarian. So skipping ahead a little further, I've added in like a keyboard and stuff using the same techniques. I wanted to start getting some different lights in there using maybe some red lights under where the feet are, where those kind of activation buttons are. I thought it'd be cool to have more of a red light being something more important. I end up going with a little bit of more of a cooler light underneath on the legs. But again, it's just really helpful to see all this in real time. Eevee has really changed my workflow a lot. You just get to see everything immediately and don't have to wait, you know, a couple minutes to render something or sometimes longer than that. And you can just judge immediately. Is this what I want the final to look like and just adjust on the fly to get exactly what you want. Trying to get some sort of backlight on the right. I haven't really modeled all that stuff where it goes back into the, the rest of the ship, but just getting some kind of light back there to maybe have some rim light on the back of the chair for the final illustration. Copying around some details on the roof so it's just not a bunch of lines going from left to right. Maybe there's some more structural, implying some more structural beams. Uh, copying around the hoses so we get some more uh, tubes and things everywhere so it feels a little more messy. Maybe there's a bunch of power cables that need to power all these screens on the left and it's just an opportunity for us to make things a bit more messy and sci-fi looking. Getting some more blue lights in there because the screens weren't glowing enough it just helps get some some of that lights bouncing around on the chair and different areas of the scene. Using decal machine to get some decals in there. Again, just to add some interesting uh, accents and things. You can go crazy with this stuff, but again, all these plugins just make it so easy. You know, I, I wouldn't want to model that. I can just use decal machine and throw a little thing on there and it, it looks good. Using hard ops to adjust some of the, the bevels and things to get some industrial milled looking forms on these so they're not just boxy. Some more lights on the left to to make those side lights or side screens pop out a bit more. I felt like there's too many buttons and things in the upper right, so I deleted some of those or moved them out of the way. Maybe some more cables and things up there would be more interesting. Get some of those uh, hazard stripes in there like we had in our production drawing. Some caution symbols and Again, just starting to bring everything to life. Uh, you can look at your reference to get an idea for where a lot of this usually is on military equipment and things. So it feels a little more believable and interesting. So you're not just slapping things all over the place. It has a little more logic to it. Some quick uh, test renders in Eevee. Rendering out a few different things before we take it into Photoshop and start doing a detail pass. Maybe trying some foggy renders that I might use in the final. I really like that kind of a uh, walkie talkie kind of thing with a cable. I forgot to add that in, so I'm just adding that in now. I found some cool military techie walkie talkies I thought were interesting and just doing the quick image plane is texture modeling technique to get a quick asset we can toss into the scene. doing some final adjustments and decal placement, get a cable that looks like it's connected to the walkie-talkie looking thing. Some more test renders to see if that's looking pretty cool. I wasn't sure if I wanted all the cables or less cables, so I do a couple different versions, so I have some options in Photoshop. So once I get into Photoshop, I'm just comping things together getting everything into place, seeing if I want to use the background version or the black windowed version. End up going with the version with the uh, epic clouds and things in the background just because it felt a little more interesting. 
just touching things up, putting in panel lines, adding in details that would just be too time consuming in Blender. Maybe a little vignette around the edges. Using Lazy Nozumi to get some clean lines and part lines and things. Add in some little attachments and things that, again, would just be a bit too time consuming to model. I kind of took a step back and I, I started looking at more NASA photos and things and I found the there's a lot of cool details around the windows to make sure that they're airtight for space. So I just took some of those details and I'm just bashing in some photos and things to make those a little more interesting and, and realistic looking. And again, just details that I probably wouldn't want to model. So it's just adding in Photoshop really quick. Again, it's mostly there, like the renders we got out of Blender. You don't really have to do too much. You're just kind of adding a last like five, 10 percent, which is pretty awesome. You know, before we'd have to just do all this by hand. And now it's we can get it there in 3D really quick and it just so fast and efficient. And it's just fun. You know, it's not it doesn't feel like work like it used to. It's just a really cool time to be a concept designer with all these new tools that just save us a bunch of time and make our jobs a lot easier. So it's just really exciting to be able to go from a quick sketch to a rough block out to a production drawing to a more presentable illustration like this in you know a couple hours. This sort of thing would have taken forever back in the day and now it's just really fun with all these cool tools that we have at our fingertips. And you might say, Ben, well, I can do a photo bashed illustration of this faster. And that's true. We can do it a lot quicker. But what's great about doing it in Blender is that we can, you know, rotate the camera if the director wants a different view, start designing different shots. Maybe there's a cinematic and you can get a bunch of different angles and work with the cinematic director or whatever. And you just it's a lot more flexibility for change doing it this way. So if you haven't tried this yet, I would highly recommend giving it a go, maybe taking some drawings you have and, and trying this out. It's just a really fast and efficient technique, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.